Good morning, great love family. We thank you for this day. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice, be glad in it. We thank you for tuning in this morning to uh, hear the church service. Uh, those who are uh, watching from far away, those who are right here in Austin and, and all the Austin surrounding, we thank you for tuning in this morning. And uh, this is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad. And we thank you, Lord. This is your day. We thank you for this morning, for just waking us up to see another day that wasn't promised to us. Right. This morning, the scripture will come from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. And it reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways of knowledge him and he shall direct your paths. May God have a blessing on the hearers, the readers, and the doers of the Holy Word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good morning, church family. Good morning. Good morning. The Bible says that man shall always, should always pray. That's it, that's it. Let us come to the grace, yes. the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy. mercy. Amen. Lord, amen. Lord, we just thank you for this. Thank day. you, Lord. Jesus. We thank you for everything that you've done. Lord, yes. Lord we praise you just because yes. of who you are. Yes. We come asking, oh Lord, that as we go into this service, yes, Jesus, Lord, yes. that we come in, oh Lord, just to lift you up and to give that's you it, praise. That's it. And that we leave to worship you in spirit yes, Lord, and yes. in truth and to serve you. Please, Heavenly Father. Lord, we come, O oh Lord, with the spirit of things. Yes, Lord, yes, oh, yes. 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 And we know that every day, every day is a day of yes. thanksgiving. Yes. Yes. And yes. this day, today, yes. we give you yes. thanks. Thank we you, give Lord. you the glory, we yes. give you the praise. Yes, Lord, oh, thank Jesus, you. Because you've already got Right God. now, Lord. Lord, if you don't do nothing, let us do it now. You've already done it. Yes, yes. I'm asking that you bless the preacher. Please, Lord. Heavenly Father, bless the word. Oh, Lord, as this broadcast goes out, oh, Lord, yes, Lord you, yes. just send yes. your Holy Spirit to yes. 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 through the broadcast. Yes. Oh, Lord, let them feel yes. your presence. Yes. Yes. Let them feel something that they've right never felt before. Yes. That they can say that I've truly been yes. touched yes. Yes. by the hands of the Lord. That's it, that's it. As the preacher preaches, yes, I'm Lord, asking, yes. Lord, strengthen him. Please, right let him stand firmly right now, Lord, on right now. your word, Jesus. Right now, Jesus. Speak through him. Right now, As the choir sings, yes, Lord, let us yes. come from my heart, Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes. Let them know that it's not I, but it's the yes. Christ yes. that lives inside. That's it. That's it. Lord, we come asking you, Jesus, yes. that you continue to protect. Please, Heavenly Father. You continue to strengthen. Yes, Lord, yes. You continue to forgive. Yes, Lord, yes. For you said that if we confess our sins, yes, Jesus, you're that you are faithful yes, and, just and just to forgive yes. and to cleanse us yes, yes. from all of our unrighteousness. Yes. That's it, that's it. Lord, we come thank you, O oh Lord, because thank yesterday you. is gone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tomorrow may never come. That's it, that's it. But today, today we right. give you praise. Right we now, give our right now. To you. Yes. Have your way. Have Lord. your way. For it's all for your glory. Right now, Lord. Yes. Most of all, Jesus. Yes. Receive our praise. Right now, Lord. Yes, God. It's unto the King of Kings. Yes, King of Kings. It's unto the Lord of Lords. Yes. 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 It's unto the Great I Am. Yes. 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 It's unto the Alpha. Yes. Yes. To the Omega. Yes. Hold on. Right now, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
because the battle is over to shout. You can shout right now because we know that victory shall be mine.
once you get the victory, tell somebody that won't he do it?
Lord. Somebody say, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Somebody say, amen. amen. Come on, say, amen, like you mean. Amen. I know we're in the midst of a pit there. Listen, time has changed, and uh, this thing has gotten serious. Yes, it has. If you've been watching the news, you know that Texas is high. Yes, it is. In other words, Texas uh, got a whole lot of cases, and uh, we want to be careful. I thank the Lord for the brethren who have gotten together and put the six feet thing outside. Amen. Uh, listen, y'all, we we can't slack. You, you, you got to be on top of your game. Because this is no joke. And my job as a leader is to protect the flock that I pastor. Now, you can, you can hear me or you can say, I don't care what he say. That, that's your business. You understand? But, but, but when I get there, when I die and get to heaven, I, 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 I don't want God to say, I told you to say it and you didn't say it. Yeah, yeah. Listen, y'all, it's gotten serious. We have to maintain our six feet apart. We got to maintain that. Amen. All of this picture taking that y'all do, I'm sorry. We got to, if you want to do it, let me give you this. Don't do it in here. All right. Amen. After church, listen, y'all, it's serious. And I'm, 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 I watch the news and people might say, it's faith. I don't care what you say with me. I really don't care. But we got to, we, we got to quit that. Now, if you want to go outside and you want to do that, that's fine. But in here, when we get through, we need to get in our cars and go home. Amen. Come on, y'all. This thing is real. I, they, they ain't no joke. I, I know some of y'all take it for a joke, but this is real, man. So what, what really captured my, my, my heart is, uh, you know, what happened to my son down the street here. Yeah. You know, ain't no, ain't no mishap or nobody don't know because Ace put it on the Facebook. Uh -huh. They contracted it. Eight people got it. It's serious. And so... We want to be protecting ourselves at all costs. It, it's real. And I want to warn some of y'all. See, because you young people don't understand. You, you can go out there and act a fool and they take that back on the grandma. Yeah, yeah, you know, because when we get a certain age, the thing ain't no joke, man. And so young people don't take it serious, but I take it serious. And as a leader, I'm taking it more serious because my job, again, is to protect the flock. Right. Don't worry. wife. Ain't no more going out in the evening and going clothes up in them places for me. I ain't doing it. Now, y'all can. I, I, like I'm telling you, I'm not mad at you, but I am not going to put myself in that position. Amen. Amen. Because it's really serious. And I wanted to get that out. I wanted to get that out. Now that I've gotten that out, I've gotten what I needed to say out. Now you can, you can, you can take heed to it, or you can say, <laughs> you can keep doing your thing. I got, I got to I want to thank God. I want y'all to pray for Deacon Cook because he's going in to have surgery on Wednesday, Amen. and so we want to keep Deacon Cook in our prayers. We want to keep Sister Mary Watkins in our prayer because uh, she just lost her sister. Remember, she just lost her mother. Now she lost her sister. Keep Sister Lara Mitchell family in prayer uh, because we just eulogized her. Uh, and as we can see, people people are dying. And uh, we, we just need to protect ourselves. That's all I'm going to say. Father, we come now, we come in the name of Jesus, and Lord, we thank you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for things being as well as it is. Thank you for protecting us, God. You've given us another time, another chance to come into this sanctuary. 
and give your name the glory and give your name the praise. Because we realize, God, that you deserve the glory. You deserve the praise. It's nothing about us, but it's all about you. And I pray, and I pray, and my prayers, God, that the people of God would get this in their spirit that it's not about us, but it's all about you. Because you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the one that we are breathing. You are the reason why we got breath in our body this morning. We thank you for that, God. We give your name the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want to talk to me and all of y'all today. <laughs> I didn't I didn't exclude myself, did I? I said me. Yeah. Uh-huh. I didn't say y'all. I said me and all of y'all. That means all of us. Uh-huh. Because some of us, we think that we are perfect. And we think that we, 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 we don't have no flaws. So, so we feel that we got the right, help me Lord Jesus, to go and dog somebody else. <laughs> help me help somebody. We, we really do feel that. We, we feel because we come to church, we lift up holy hands, and we all of that in a cup of tea. But can I tell you something today? All of us got some issues. Ain't nobody talking back to me, but all, when I say all, all, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so that, I believe that, that leave no space where we ought to have mercy on each other. The Bible says in Luke chapter 13, uh, verses 6 to 9, Luke chapter 13, verses 6 through 9. Nine. Luke is in the New Testament. Amen. Matthew, Mark. Yeah. You, you, you didn't go to, to the BTU aisle and all that and learn them little things. You, you didn't think it would be important this day. But, but Luke chapter 13, we're going to read verses 6 through 9. The Bible says, he spent also this parable. Uh -huh. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard mm -hmm. and he came and sought fruit thereon mm -hmm. and found none mm -hmm. then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard behold these three years I come seeking fruit yeah. on this fig tree and found none mm -hmm. cut it down right why covereth it the ground and he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dug it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. I want to talk to you this morning on the subject, you still have a chance. You still have a chance. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but I believe I'm preaching to somebody who somebody else said you are out. Somebody else said you would not make it. Somebody else, I'm talking to somebody who been hurt in the church and some leader told you, you ain't going to be no good. Help me, Lord Jesus. And some leader told you, you are no good. But they don't understand that God is a God of a second chance. Look at your name and say, I'm thanking God because he gave me another chance. Come on, God gave us another chance. And if ain't nobody in here happy this morning, I'll get happy all by myself because God in his infinite nine gave me another chance. When I look at the news and I look at the numbers, Joseph, I can't get I can say this, thank you, Jesus, because I could have been in the number. Ain't nobody talking. And I'm talking about the number that has been dead and gone on home. God has given all of us another chance. And if you're in here this morning, you ought to look up holy hands and say thank you Jesus for another chance. Another 
another chance. I thank you. I thank you for another chance. Because I ain't been that good. Help me, Lord Jesus. I, I ain't did everything correct. Ain't nobody talking. No. But I thank you that you gave me another chance. And I'll always be grateful to you because you gave me another chance. Somebody else might have called me out. Somebody else might have said I wouldn't make it. But God, you gave me another chance. And I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. Because the day that we're living in, sometimes people will count you out. I said I'm preaching to all of us. Because as a leader, sometimes I look out at people and I want them to do better. I really do want them to do better. And then when I see them doing a little something, I might say something wrong as a leader. Help me, Lord Jesus. Why? 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 Because flesh get in the way. Help me here. But if we're going to look for Jesus, we got to have some fruit on our tree. Look at your neighbor and say, I might need some fruit on my tree. Come on, come on, come on. We got to have some fruit on our tree. Watch with the Bible. Watch the Bible. The first thing we learned about this fig tree was its poor performance, yeah, yeah. which was the case or the cause for the decree of the judgment, namely the cutting down of the tree. Because this tree had poor performance, they wanted to cut this tree down. And so the application of the parable is, it's talking about Israel. Uh, they were not producing fruit for God. And today, many of us as individuals are not producing fruit for God either. Yeah. And let me tell you something. When you in the kingdom of God and you're producing no fruit, mm, God have mercy. If you're producing no fruit, that's not a normal behavior for a believer. If you call yourself a believer, you ought to be producing some kind of fruit. Help me, Lord Jesus. It's, it's a fruit thing. It's a fruit thing. You, you go, Don't say that I, I love God. I love him with all my heart, my mind, heart, mind, and soul, and I'm not producing no fruit. Look at the Bible. He said it, 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 he wasn't producing no fruit. No fruit. It wasn't nothing. So watch this. For three years, watch the Bible. For three years, he came seeking fruit on this tree. Come on now. And he found none. That, that, that's in verse 7. He, he found none. He, he, came, he came looking for some fruit on the tree. And he found none. I want to explain something to you. The three years does not go from the time of the planting. From when the tree should have been producing fruit. So three years says it had ample time to produce fruit, but did not. And so, and so watch this, watch this. It ain't talking about when you've been born. I ain't talking about when the tree was planted. I'm talking about the tree got to a certain age. And he said, he says, you ought to be producing some fruit. But when he came by, the tree wasn't producing no fruit. What are you trying to say, Isaac Grant? I'm trying to say, once you've been born again and you've been in the kingdom for a while, you ought to be producing some kind of fruit. Ah, help us, Lord Jesus. Your, your fruit tree ought to have something on there. And can I tell you something what they ought to have in there? You ought to have some love. You ought to have some joy. You ought to have at least some peace, some long-suffering, some gentleness, some goodness, some faith, some meekness, some temperance. But the Bible says this tree did not produce no fruit. That's it. And so as a believer, what he's saying to you is, if you're in the tax, you ain't producing none of this what I just said. You, 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 you. And, and it's hard. I ain't going to say, listen, it's hard to be around a believer that ain't producing none of these. You ain't got no love. You ain't got no joy. You ain't got no peace. You ain't got no long suffering. You ain't got no gentleness. You ain't got no goodness. You ain't got no faith. You ain't got no meekness. You ain't got no temperance. It's hard to be around a believer like that. Come on, you ain't possessing none of that. And then you always about dogging some. 
somebody else out. Can I tell you right here on this Sunday morning, as I tell you, be careful what you say about other people. Be careful how you try to dog somebody else out. Because the same person who you dogging out, you might need tomorrow. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Because some of y'all think you perfect. You think you all of that in a cup of tea. But I'm coming to tell you, you ain't there. Help me, Lord Jesus. This tree did not produce any fruit. Yeah. Wasn't nothing there. Wasn't nothing there. Lord, it wasn't nothing there. So watch this. He came and he sought fruit thereon. The Bible says in verse 6, back up there, he said, he found none. Come up, but what should he say? He came and he sought fruit thereon, yeah, yeah. and he found none. none. Right. Listen, all people are inspected by God. Y'all yes, ain't saying nothing. Yes, you might hide nothing, or you can't hide nothing from Him. Right. Come on out of here. Yeah. We may boast of false fruit, yeah. but that only deceived the deceiver. See, you might go, around, listen, if he says, he said, I came and I saw it, fruit. He was inspecting the tree. That's it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh -huh. Just like he comes along and he inspects us. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Right. To see, brother, we got some fruit on our tree. Help me, Lord yeah. Jesus. And sometimes he comes and he sees no fruit on our tree. Look at your name and say, I got to get some fruit on my tree. Because a lot of times you ain't doing nothing but deceiving the deceiver. Yeah. Running around here talking about you all of that in a cup of tea. Girl, I don't do this. Or, Girl, I don't do this. You can deceive the deceiver. But you got to understand that God already see you. And God already know. He knows you ain't nothing but a deceiver. You're a liar. You run around and telling folks all of that. But you, I, come on, talk back to me. Come on, I love you. I love you. You know you hate people. Talk back to me. You are a deceiver. And you got to understand a According to the word, he has already inspected you. Yes. So you ain't got to get mad at nobody. That's the problem we have now. Everybody want to get mad at somebody else. You ain't got to get mad. God already sees because he inspects the fruit tree. He inspects your walk with the Lord. You, you run around here and you out of bounds. Help me, Lord yeah. Jesus. Right. And the first thing you say <laughs> when another believer try to correct you, what? and that's our job, and I know you're coming in now. The right. first thing you won't go to, because hey, we don't judge me. Yeah. No, ain't nobody judging you. The world has already judged you. Come on. And so God has already judged you because he has inspected your tree. If you're wrong, you're just wrong. And you are listening. Too wrong can't make it right. Well, well, watch this. Watch this now. He, he came. He, he, he called him. Verse 6. He said, you deceiver. Watch it. The fig tree planted. Watch what he said in verse 6. In his vineyard. Watch this. The poor performance of the fig tree was without excuse. Yeah. And a lot of y'all got a bunch of excuses. Yeah. You got a bunch of excuses. Yeah. Why you can't do it? Why I can't love? Why I ain't got what's it? Come on in. Why I ain't got this? Why I can't love? I ain't got no temperament. I ain't got no children. I ain't got no God. I'm always mad. I ain't got no joy in my heart. And some of y'all make all kind of excuses. Yeah. Yeah. But watch this. Watch me now. was given, this tree was given uh, help us Lord great advantage to produce if you in the house of God you are given great advantage to produce because you come Sunday after Sunday to hear the word of God come on you, you in the vineyard so this is seen, watch this, in the location where the tree was planted. Watch this. 
The Jewish nation was given a great location. Mm -hmm. It was secluded from others mm -hmm. and was provided with every, every need to help them be fruitful for God. But they became barren. Mm -hmm. And so watch the here. You're given the opportunity to be fruitful for God. Yeah. But a lot of times, you run around here and you barren. Right. You know what barren mean? You empty. Right. Help me. And the same is true, watch this, what? of many folks in our day, uh -huh. spiritually. They got spiritual opportunities. It abounds uh, to help them bear fruit for uh -huh. God, but few bear much fruit. Right. God don't only want you to bear the fruit, but he wants you to bear much fruit. Yeah. Come on, come on, talk back to me. See, if the church would get right, then the world would get right. Ain't nobody talking. But the problem we have is you don't want to bear much fruit. You want to go ahead and be hateful to some sinner, but you forgot that you was once a sinner yourself. Talk back to me if you can. You can't dog them people out. The Bible says with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Not with hatred, not with bigot, but it with love and kindness. And when the church get on board, when we start loving and kinding each other, then we can go out and tell the world about Jesus. Well, well, watch this, watch this. And, and, and you would feel that this tree with all of this issue, mm -hmm. or you as a child of God, with all of this issue, you would feel that you ought to be cut down. Man, I ain't, I ain't producing nothing. I ought to be cut down. But the God that you serve is so full of mercy. He's so full of grace. He'll give you another chance. Anybody in there know that God give you another chance? Anybody in there really believe that the God that you serve, he's already given you another chance, another chance to be in the house of God, another chance to lift up holy hands. He will give you another chance. Watch in verse 7. Watch this. The owner of the fig tree was justifiably not happy about the failure of the tree to produce fruit. All right. And God is not happy with us when we don't produce much fruit. So therefore, he spoke to the caretaker of the vineyard and he made a proclamation mm -hmm. against the tree which decreed judgment upon the tree. What's it? The caretaker. He made a proclamation. In other words, he 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 was going to the owner and he was going, he was I'm showing you in the scripture where he was saying, give him another chance. I know, I know, I know you came by and you found none. I, I know, I know this tree needs some help. But I need you to give them another chance. Yeah. Now watch this. There were two motives for cutting down the tree. Come on now. The first motive was poor productivity. It was poor because the Bible says in verse 7, he said, I come seeking fruit on this tree and find none. So that's poor productivity. Can I talk right there? Some people in church, you got poor productivity. I got to talk to you for real. Help, help. Uh, you, got, you got poor productivity. You, 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 you don't know how to have gentleness. You, you don't know how to be kind. You, you, you know, and you, when, when you do that kind of stuff, those are people that don't have no joy. And the Bible said if you ain't got no joy, you ain't got no strength. So watch this. The main reason for cutting down the tree was the fact that it was not producing fruit. And so sometimes in ministry, hear me, a lot of times people want to cut you down because you ain't there yet. 
the hell belong Jesus. You just ain't there yet. But look at your name and say, I'm coming. Come on, look at your name and say, I'm coming. I know you, I know you know that I'm not there yet, but God have mercy, give me time. I'm coming. I'm, I'm coming because I know I got to put some fruit back on my tree. I know my tree is a little empty now, but I got to put some kind of fruit back on my tree if I am going to be productive in the kingdom of God. What's the second thing was his presence? He says, what's the Bible? He says, why cumber it? Come the ground. Well, the word translated cumbereth means to render barren or stir. Yeah. Thus, watch this. Thus the tree, by taking nourishment from the ground, was making the ground of no use to the other tree plants. So the tree was wasting good salt and was hindering the plants around it because or beside and then and it caused them not to bear fruit itself. Right. Can I talk to somebody? Uh -huh. You hanging with somebody. Mm -hmm. Come on. You hanging up with somebody that is not producing fruit. Yeah. And so when you hang around people that are not producing fruit, that spirit will fall down on you and you will become just like them. And you won't be no good for nobody. Yeah. Help me, Lord Jesus. And what I'm saying, some of y'all need to watch who you hanging out with. If you hanging out with folks who are always mad and mean and talking about people, you are gonna become just like them people. And then watch this, your fruit ain't on the tree and you ain't good for nothing. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm giving you Bible. Come on now. Cause it was cumbering. It was bad. And you're on the ground and you causing all the others not to produce anything. Some of y'all hanging around people and they'll cause you not to produce anything. Because you fall right into the trap. Girl, I can't stand so-and-so. Huh? What? People are dying? We are in the midst of a pandemic? And who says God's going to let you live after I get through preaching? And you can't have mercy or show mercy to nobody else. And you want somebody to show mercy to you? You better get in the Bible. Because this tree, I'm telling you, this tree, this tree is teaching us something. But I want to show you where God got mercy on us, even when we are like that. Even when you ain't producing nothing. Even when you, you ain't rendering no fruit. Even when you're there. Even when you're stale. God still got mercy on you. Look at your name and say, I thank God for his mercy. What's the method? The method was severe. Because it says in verse 7, it says, cut it down. First, what's this? The explanation of the method is cut it down. All, it also involved moving it from the vineyard and burying it. Yeah, yeah. You ain't never been in church and somebody try to bury you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they just try to bury you. you. You made one mistake and they put you in the ground. They, they, come on, talk back to me if you can. They made one mistake and they said, ah, oh, put them in the ground. They ain't no good. They ain't no good for nobody. But you better be careful with that. Because if God had mercy on this tree, you ought to have mercy on somebody else. Amen. Watch this. John the Baptist said to the unrepentant Israel, Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not fruit, a good fruit, is hewn down and cast into the fire. But listen to me. This judgment does not mean that fruitless Christians will be cast into hell as is the case with sinners. Yeah. See, sometimes, watch this, when you don't know the Bible, somebody can get up here and preach you happy. Mm. And the Bible says that the fruitfulness Christians, uh, you on your way to hell. And some of y'all will get up here and holler, yeah, yeah, and you holler, yeah, to lie. That is not what the Bible is saying. And listen, a fruitful Christian.
Christian, you ain't going to hell. A fruitful sinner, a fruitless sinner, you are on your way to hell. So he ain't talking about if you're a fruitless Christian, you're on your way to hell. The fire in the case, watch me, let me prove it, of the fruitful Christian is rather like the fire that tried every man's work of what it is or what it should be. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians mm -hmm, chapter 3, verse 13 through 15, watch this. If any man's work abide, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. He himself, watch this, shall be saved. Yet so as by fire. Watch this. If, if your work ain't there, that don't mean you ain't saved. Come on, talk back to me. If you ain't got no fruit on the tree, that don't mean you're not saved. You are saved, but you need to get some fruit on your tree. Don't let nobody preach you happy and tell you to stay. You're going to hell. And the Bible says it right there. You're going to hell. And that's why you got to be a Bible reader and understand what the word is saying. Because you get caught up in the hoopla and you feel that I ain't got no fruit on my tree. Pastor Grant, am I going to hell? No. You ain't going to hell. You go, you're going to hell. But look at your reward when you get there. Your reward's going to be slack. Yeah, yeah. Now watch this. The second exaltation is what's this? It's of the method. The judgment fits the crime. Listen, listen. The judgment fits the crime. Of course, many will object to such stern judgment, but these objective need to be upset about the fruit tree delinquency rather than the judgment. When we spend most of our time arguing for more lenient sinners, we forgot about the magnitude of the crime. The magnitude was the tree was not producing any fruit. And so the, 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 the owner of the, of the tree said, cut it down. Come on, come on, I'm trying to make some money and you ain't making, listen, and the fruit tree ain't bearing no fruit. Well, a normal farmer would say, cut it down because they're trying to make money. Okay, you up here and you're just sitting here. We don't need you looking pretty. We need you to produce. Yeah. And so sometimes we get upset when the sentence ain't come, cut it down. It's a sentence now. Cut it down. You ain't producing nothing. I need you to cut it down. In other words, watch this, watch this. When you go against the grain of God and God begins to punish you. All right. Come on, you're why, 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 why God doing this to me? He's doing that to you because you weren't obedient to the word of God. And so when he does that to you, it does not mean that he hates you. It means that he loves you because he says, if I love you, I'm chasing you back to me. And a lot of time when God is chasing in people, I tell oh, Isaac, I get in the way and I help him because of Isaac. I love everybody. But sometimes I need to smack up and let God beat you back to him because that's what he's trying to do with your disobedience there. Yeah. Right. Now watch this now. Watch this now. Watch this now. He said in verse 8. He said, let it alone this year. That's it. That's it. Also till I shall dig about it mm -hmm. and dug it. Mm -hmm. The tree had failed for three years. Yeah. But the plea would give it a period of one more year to make a correction. Yeah, yeah. This shows the grace of God which give the repentant sinner more than accurate or adequate time to repent. It is the plea. And sometimes when we have no fruit on our tree, the Father 
begin to plead on our behalf. Right. Give them another chance. Just give them one more chance and one more year to get it right. Is there anybody in here ready to thank God for one more chance? Anybody in here ready to give God some glory for one more chance? Come on, open up your mouth and tell God thank you for one more chance. I know I didn't get it all right, but you're giving me one more chance. I know I'm out of bounds, but you're giving me one more chance. And anybody in here can give God the glory for one more, one more chance. One more chance to get it right. I know I messed up. I know I was in the wrong place. I know I shouldn't have been there. I know I shouldn't have said that. But God, I thank you that you are able to get me one more chance. One more chance. Oh, God, I thank you. I thank you for one more chance. Thank you, Joe. I thank God for one more chance. Thank you for another day, God, that you allow me to roll out of my bed and come to Great Love Baptist Church and try to help your people. Thank you. You could have taken me out, but thank you for one more chance. God gave the tree one more year to get it right. But I don't want you to take God's mercy for granted. I don't want you to take God's grace for granted. Because the Bible says, watch it, if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Grace is not forever. Can I get a witness here? Yeah. Repentance must be as a result from the extra time of the sinner will have to get it right. And sometimes, listen here, when grace run out on you, I'm sorry, your tree gonna be cut down. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but look at your neighbor and say, Grace will run out. But thank God for mercy. Thank God for mercy. Anybody there, thank God for mercy. Come on, anybody there, thank you for mercy. Can anybody in here this morning help me out and say, God, for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. You have given me one more chance to get this thing right. I know it might run out, but I am, I am ready to get it right with you. And I thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody help me thank the Lord. Say thank you. Because it gave us another chance to get it right. I remember when I was down and out suffering with a dreadful disease. But he gave me another chance. I don't care about you. I thank him. I thank him for another chance. I thank him for mercy. I thank him for grace. Because I realize I didn't have to be here. Lord, I 
y'all thinking? Who I feel like dancing right there? Because you might not feel this like I feel. Lord, I thank you. I said, Lord, I thank you. All that I've done wrong. I came to church and ran from the Lord. Ain't nobody talking. But he still had mercy on me. He still had grace on me. I came in and faked out like I was saved. But he still had mercy on me. He still had grace on me. Until I got it right. And don't you know I'm glad that I got it right? Anybody in there glad that you got it right? Come on, anybody in there glad that you got it right? Anybody in there glad that he gave you enough time to get it right? He gave that tree. He said, I'm giving you one more year. But if I come back again to inspect your tree, and it's the same way, I got to cut you down. I gave you mercy. I gave you grace. But I ain't holding on too long. So it's time to come in. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I want to warn you, if you're looking at me on this Facebook thing, it's time to come in. Because grace and mercy will soon run out. And you don't want to be caught out there without nothing on your tree. You, you don't want to be cut out there. Because when he come back again, when he come back again, it ain't going to be no more inspecting. You're going to either be in or you're going to be out. If you have not given your life to the Lord, then you out. But if you have given your life to the Lord, you are in. Come on, you are in. So don't listen. I want to stress this. Don't let nobody preach this text to you and tell you that you're going to hell. That's not in the text. Woo, God, I'm so glad. Thank you, Lord. I'm so glad. Because if I had read this text and he said, I've got to cut him down and they're going to hell, walk in that mercy, that would have mean that he had no grace. He couldn't have gone in verse 8 and 9. That would have mean it would have been the book would have been wrong. But God, in his infinite mind, I mean, y'all think about this. You know you did something wrong yesterday. You did something wrong a minute before you got to church. But aren't you glad that God, aren't you glad that God has shown you mercy? Aren't you glad that he's shown you grace? I, I, I mean, he's, you've been in some places you shouldn't have been in. You could have died out there. But he showed you mercy. And he showed you some grace. And since he done that, you just ought to be happy about that thing. You, you just ought to be so graceful. You ought to, Lord, I thank you. I thank you because you, you look beyond my fault. And you saw my need. You knew what I needed. So you look beyond all of my not bearing no fruits. And you said, Isaac, I'm going to give you a second chance. Just, just another chance, Isaac to get it right. I'm going to give you a chance to love the folks like you should love them. I'm going to give you a chance to be some fruit of the Spirit. Some gentleness. Some long suffering. You, you, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to you. You know what long suffering is? Watch me. Long suffering says I'm tired of telling you. I'm really tired of telling you. I'm tired of telling you this over and over again and over and over again. And, 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 and I, I just give up on you. I don't care. No, 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 that's not long suffering. That's not long suffering. But long suffering says, okay. I told them one time, God, they didn't get it. I'm going to tell them again, God, they might not get it. But I'm going to tell them again, God, and they might not get it. But I'm going to tell them again, God, and they might not get it. But I'm going to tell them again, God, they might not get it. But I'm going to tell them again, God, and they might not get it. I'm going to keep telling you until you get it right. That's long suffering. 
But a lot of us, you ain't got that in you. You know, you know, you can't go, you can't go. You tell somebody to do something one time, they don't do it, you mad. <laughs> and y'all better get this off your spirit. This is bad in the body of Christ. Yes, it is. I ain't fooling with you no more. Yeah. That's bad. In the book of Mark, the Bible says, it is scary. Everything we say will come up again. <laughs> what would it be look like if I tell days? I'm sick of you, man. I'm just sick of you. And I ain't fooling with you no more. What would God say to me when I'm out of here and I, I got to give an account? Isaac, you told that man, what? You gave up? I didn't give up on you when you was pumping all that crack cocaine in your body, busting your heart. I didn't give up on you. I had mercy on you. And the mercy I had on you, I expected that mercy. Be shared with other folk. That's why I call you to do what you're doing. Yeah. He don't give you another chance to get it right with God today. If you hear and you hear and you want to be saved today and you know in your heart that you're not saved. You can't be saved when we do the center prayer. You repeat after me. If you believe in your heart what you say with your mouth, you will be saved today. Amen. Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner. I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. I believe in my heart that Jesus is your son. He died on the cross for my sins. He was buried. He rose on the third day. He now in heaven sitting at your right side in the seating on my behalf. Jesus, I'm inviting you to come live in my heart to be my personal Lord and Savior. Jesus, I need you. Holy Spirit, take complete control over my life. Help me to faithfully follow Jesus Christ and do the will of the living God every day of my life. I'm saved. I've been watched in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Heavenly Father, for loving me enough to save my life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
get up there, that's the one that God chose. If he say Jesus and somebody gets saved, then that's what God wants. Why, why, why are you being the judge, judge her when you ain't the judge? You know, you sitting there judging. God says, okay, you've done your job, son. And so we critique everybody on things. We ought to stop that. Let's stop that. Joseph, thank you, man. Thank you so much for that. I, I was in the back. I said, Lord, I appreciate that right there. And Kay did a good job singing oh, yeah. Come on, come on. If you can't clap for that, come on. If you can't clap for that, the devil is all up in you. you, you come on, if you can't clap for that, that's Satan in you. I don't hear nobody. She did a good job. Doing the invitation. Thank you, God. Thank you. 
day and, and, just, and just roll in and just roll in Joseph another chance it just yeah. it just roll right in yeah. now don't y'all forget about Deacon Cook mm -hmm. he's my friend he's my Deacon uh, uh, he going into surgery you know Deacon Cook he'll call you and he'll oh they go in and they go <laughs> well they go in the folks back and stuff uh, every day so let's pray now, but we don't want to take it lightly. Let's pray that uh, everything the doctor does will be in the will of God. Amen. And uh, Amen. we sure want to keep Ms. Mary Watkins in our Amen. prayer. Amen. Uh, Mary have so surprised me as a pastor. Amen. When, when Mary's mother died, Mary, Mary told me, well, Pastor, I'm okay. Uh, God is good. Yeah, yes, yes. And yes, come yes. Trip, I said, what? She said, God is good. Yes, he is. And then she called me. She said, you know, my sister passed, but God still is good. Yes, he and she is. Said, That's all I want. Yes. I don't want to talk. That's all I want. God is good. Yes, and let me yes. tell you something. That takes strength from the Holy Ghost to say that. Right. Mama ends up, that's strength from the Holy Ghost. Yes. To say that, and it shocked me. I said, well, Mary, wow. She's been in church, but she's a believer. She was strong. That's strength. Everybody can't do that. Amen. Some of us would have fold over and buckle up. Ah, but Mary was strong. And I thank God for her being that strong. So we want to and pray for uh, Linda Wright. I know she's dead and gone, but her brother died. The one that was in the nursing home. So we want to pray for that family too. Uh, and as you can see, uh, uh, we're going to have a funeral here Saturday at 3 o'clock. I don't know yet. I know there's a young man and a lady who used to go here to great love. Her son passed away. And I think I'm going to do the eulogy. And uh, I'll probably know it when I see it. But as you can see, uh, people are dying. And an alarm and rape especially in Texas. I got to say this again, y'all. Especially here in, in Texas, man. Our numbers are out of the ceiling. So you want to be careful, y'all. You, you really do. You want to mask up. You want to wash your hands. You want to stay six feet far. I think CDD, I always get it wrong. They got it out now. Somebody shot me some saying 10%. Somebody said 50. But whatever that number is, what they're saying is, don't be gathering. That's what they're saying. Don't don't go in that building and be all up on each other. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Listen to me, y'all. And I'm saying this for all of y'all who come by my house sometime. I'm saying this as the man of my house. I can't stop my wife from giving you a plate. I can't stop that. But if you come by my house, I'm gonna put it in that garage and open the door and then you give it and all much better. Amen. Some of y'all might think that's mean, but that's mean. That, 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 I'm, I, I got a family to protect. And then you might not see it like I see it. You might not. You might say, well, I, but that's, that's fine. I, I'm not mad at you, but don't be mad at me. Because they say no gathering. And some of y'all got kids going to be coming from here, and yonder, and there. And y'all going to let them come right in that house and pile up. But it's dangerous. I, I love, I, listen, I love people. Y'all know I love people. If you don't, then you blind in one eye and can't see all the other. I love people. But, but, but on, I, I'm not doing it. I'm not. And normally... On Thanksgiving and all the holidays, my house be the house. I, my family, my, my brother-in-law, all of we always get together. But we can't do that because we are in the midst of a pandemic. And it's real. Y'all don't believe it's real. Act, call Adrian real and ask him if it's real. He'll tell you. This stuff is real, y'all. Y'all better put the play. He'll tell you. Because it's real. Some people who have contained, this stuff is real, and I, I'm trying to be, and you can be so careful and still, but God, uh, we didn't plead the blood of Jesus over the doors of this church. If you plead the blood of Jesus over your home, but still, you did that. God got you, but don't be fooled. You understand what I'm saying? He got you. 
He, he had us so far in all these months. God have sustained us. And y'all, let's give God a round of applause for sustaining us. He has sustained us. Y'all, come on. We're getting ready to go. Come on, David. You will close us out, sir. We have forgot the tithes and offering today. But as you leave here today, faith, the earth should back that you don't have a basket. You can put your tithes and offerings in that. Because we won't never forget tithes and offerings. God been too good to us for us not to give back to God. He don't ask us for 10%. 10 cents out of a dollar. That's all God asking for. God said you can keep 90%, just give me 10. Amen. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your word, Lord, because it's your word that got to convict us. It's your word that got to change us, Lord. And we thank you for just another chance, Lord, to wake up this morning and our right frame of mind will put your help and strength. Continue to bless this church, greater Lord. Bless our pastor. Bless his family, Lord. Continue to let him preach your uncompromising word, Lord. One day at a time. Don't let us worry about anything, but let us pray about everything. Let us know, Heavenly Father, that you still in control of our lives. We walk by faith and not by sight. No weapon formed against us and our family member shall prosper. We plead the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. May the love of God and the grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule on body carry one of us until we meet again and the church did say